Sunday school was dismissed. Well, good morning, church. As, uh, as you well know, Pastor Diamond is here, and he preached on Wednesday night, and he'll be back this Wednesday and also Sunday morning. And you know, God uses him in a mighty way in uh, the way of healing. So I thought today that it would be a good time to preach on some healing to get us prepared for the services that will be coming up. But we don't have to wait till Wednesday and we don't have to wait till Sunday because God's presence is here this morning. So my question today is, does God heal today? Can we expect to see miraculous things in our more modern and high-tech world? You know, the, the world we live in today with the uh, advances in medical technology, uh, sometimes we lean more towards uh, the medical uh, and the doctors for answers. But as Christians, we know that God has a way. I mean, he uses doctors. I'm not saying not to go to the doctor. But God is still able and willing to heal you. So let me just open in a word of prayer before I start this message. Father, we thank you this morning that we're able to gather here to study your word. I pray, Lord, that your people would have ears to hear, that they would have an open heart to receive that which would be brought to them this morning. For your word goes forth and does not return void. It'll accomplish that which you set it out to do. So I thank you, Lord, for this time, and I humble myself before you and ask you to use me and take away any nervousness that I may have, that I may deliver this word. In Jesus' name, amen. So God does heal today. And faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. God is both able and willing to heal the disease, the infirmed. And many of us here have experienced God's touch. We've experienced God's healing touch, but the foundation is that God still, still heals today, and it doesn't much lie in our experience, but it lies in the scriptures. It lies in the word of God. As we see in the scriptures, sick believers do not need to remain sick, and we can see this in James chapter 5, verse 14. And the word of God says, Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church, and let them pray over him, anointing him with the oil in the name of the Lord. James was writing to Christian believers. He asked them that if any of them were sick. It is a given in life that we are born into this world and we live out our life day to day and then we die. That's a part of life. And on occasion as we live our lives day to day, we may experience sickness in our bodies. It is also a given for the believer that God is Jehovah Rapha, which means the Lord that heals you. If we turn to Exodus chapter 15, verse 26. It says, If thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and will do that which is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandments, and keep all his statutes, I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which I have brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that healeth thee. 
And we can see in the book of Exodus, uh, earlier in that chapter, that uh, Moses was leading the people, and they brought, this was after the Red Sea, they brought uh, the people from Israel from the Red Sea, and they went out into the wilderness of Shur. And they went three days in the wilderness, and they found no water. And you can find that in verse 22, and we'll continue to read on from there. And when they came to Mara, they could not drink of the waters of Mara, for they were bitter. Therefore the name of it was called Mara. And the people murmured against Moses, saying, What shall we drink? And he cried unto the Lord and said, The Lord showed him in a tree, which he had cast into the waters, and were made sweet. And there he made them for a statute and an ordinance, and there he proved them. And he said, If thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and will do that which is right in his sight, and will give ear to all his commandments, and keep all his statutes, I will put none of these diseases upon thee that I have brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that healeth thee. So we, here we have a picture of the people complaining and God providing their needs, just as he can provide your need this morning. God identified himself to Israel in a variety of names, and here he revealed himself to his people as Jehovah Rapha, the Lord who heals you. Healing is not just something that God does. It's more than that. Healing is part of God's nature. He declares that I am the Lord that heals you. God was, is, and will continue to be a healer. Remember always that you serve a healing God who has declared that his intent towards you is not to bring on you any of the diseases, but that he is the Lord that heals you. You see, God is for us and not against us. God's heart towards his people is health and healing. And we can look in the book of Exodus, chapter 23, verses 25 and 26. And you shall serve the Lord your God, and he shall bless thy bread and thy water, and I will take sickness away from the midst of thee. And there shall nothing cast their young, nor be barren in thy land. The number of thy days I will fulfill. And we can see in Deuteronomy chapter 7, verses 11 and 12 and verse 15. Thou shalt therefore keep the commandments and the statutes and the judgments which I command to thee this day to do them. Next verse. Wherefore it shall come to pass if ye hearken to these judgments and keep and do them that the Lord thy God shall keep unto thee the covenant and the mercy which he swear unto thy fathers. And verse 15. And he will love thee and bless thee and multiply thee he will also bless the fruit of thy womb and the fruit of thy land, thy corn and thy wine and thine oil, the increase of thine kind and the flocks of thy sheep in the land which he swear unto thy fathers to give thee. And then, you know, you can see that's in the Old Testament, and you might be asking yourself, okay, that was the Old Testament. Well, what about the New? So we're going to go to Acts chapter 10, verse 38. I'm going to start at verse 37. That word I say you know, which was published throughout all Judea and began from Galilee after the baptism which John had preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost 
and with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. And notice in this verse how it says that he went about doing good and healing all, not just some, healing all that were oppressed of the devil. God's spiritual healing power extends to all our diseases and all our infirmities. And we look at uh, Psalms 102, 103, verses 2 and 3. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases. And as I said before, I, I'll be going through what might seem as many scriptures, but as I said before, faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. So if you can take the word and digest it and get it in your system that when you come across problems in your life uh, you may need healing you can lean upon God's word because his word is true God can heal all our diseases none are too hard for him God can heal them all no illnesses are excluded from his great benefit whatever diseases you may have it falls under God's promise to heal all your diseases. You see, Jesus died for both our sins and for our sicknesses. And Isaiah chapter 53, verse 5. But he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities, and the chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. And we're going to look at 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 24. Who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sins should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes ye were healed. It was Jesus' willing offering of himself on the cross that bore our sins. But the very same tormented body of Jesus in his scourging and crucifixion purchased for us the blessing of divine healing. By his wounds you have been healed. Isaiah prophetically seeing the seven centuries before Christ, by his wounds we are healed. The Apostle Peter, looking back to Christ's death and resurrection, declared, By his wounds you have been healed. Jesus cried out from the cross, It is finished. Sin had been overcome. Sickness had been overcome. The cross of Jesus Christ had conquered both sin and sickness. Jesus Christ the Savior is just as surely Jesus Christ the Healer. And we can see how God responds to prayer for healing. And we're going to look in Genesis chapter 20, verses 17 and 18.
I'm going to start uh, reading in chapter 20 at verse 1. So we can kind of get a, a background of what's going on here before we get to the, uh, the scriptures that I want to share. So chapter 20 of Genesis, verse 1. And Abraham journeyed from thence towards the south, south country and dwelled among Kadesh and Shur and sojourned in Gerar. And Abraham said of Sarah his wife, She is my sister. And Ambalek, king of Gur, sent and took Sarah. As, they, as Abraham was journeying with Sarah, they came across um, this area where there was a king, Ambalek, and Abraham was afraid uh, that because his wife was fair, a beautiful woman, that uh, Ambalek would take her. And uh, so Abraham said, tell them that you are my sister. So as you'll see as the story unfolds, what happened, uh, but God came to Ambalek, oh, so, oh, I'm sorry. Verse 2, and Abraham said of Sarah, his wife, she is my sister, and Ambalek, king of Gera, sent and took Sarah. But God came to Ambalek in a dream by night and said to him, Behold, thou art but a dead man, for the woman which thou hast taken, she is a man's wife. But Ambalek had not come near her, and he said, Lord, wilt thou slay also a righteous nation? Said he not unto me, she is my sister. And she, even she herself, said that he is my brother. In the integrity of my heart and the innocency of my hands have I done this. In other words, he didn't know because they told him that uh, Sarah was Abraham's brother and that she was his sister. So as he took her, he didn't know that uh, they had lied to him. And God said unto him in a dream, Yea, I know that thou didst this in integrity of thy heart, for I also withheld from thee from sinning against me. Therefore suffered I thee not to touch her. Now therefore restore the man and his wife, for he is a prophet, and he shall pray for thee, and thou shalt live. And if thou restore her not, know that thou wilt surely die. If he were to touch her, God would have struck him uh, Seems like he would have struck him dead because it says it was, you would surely die. And he said that he would have Abraham pray for him. So kind of now that you kind of know what's going on there, I'll go to verse, uh, verses 17 and 18. So Abraham prayed unto God, and God healed Ambalek and his wife and his maidservants, and they bare children for the Lord had fast closed up all the wombs of the house of Ambalek because of Sarah, Abraham's wife. So then we'll go to Numbers chapter 12, verse 13. And here we have um, Miriam and Aaron, uh, who was spoken against Moses. And they were saying in verse 2 of chapter 12, Hath the Lord indeed spoken only by Moses? Hath he not spoken also by us? And the Lord heard it. Now the man Moses was very meek above all the men which were upon the face of the earth. And the Lord spake suddenly unto Moses and unto Aaron and unto Miriam. Come out, ye three, unto the tabernacle of the congregation. And the three came out. And the Lord came down on the pillar of the cloud and stood in the door of the tabernacle and called Aaron and Miriam, and they both came forth. And he said, Hear now my words. If there be a prophet among you, I, the Lord, will make myself known unto him in a vision and will speak unto him in a dream. My servant Moses is not so, who is faithful in all mine house. With him I will speak mouth to mouth, even apparently and not in dark speeches, and the similitude of the Lord 
shall he be whole. Wherefore then you were not afraid to speak against my servant Moses. Miriam and Aaron had spoken against Moses, and the Lord was uh, angry with them. And so because of this, the Lord's anger was kindled against them. And as the cloud departed from off the tabernacle, Miriam became leprous, white as snow, and Aaron looked upon Miriam, and behold, she was leprous. So because of her uh, speaking out against Moses, uh, leprosy came upon her. And Aaron said unto Moses, Alas, my Lord, I beseech thee, lay not the sin upon us wherein we have done foolishly and where we have sinned. Let her not be as one as one dead of whom the flesh is half consumed when he cometh out of his mother's womb. And the example that I'm trying to get at here is that Moses cried unto the Lord, saying, Heal her now, O God, I beseech thee. So he came before God on Miriam's behalf, and God heard his cry and healed Miriam. The principle here is simple. Faithful Abraham prayed, and God healed Moses prayed for leprous Miriam, and God healed her. King David also understood the power of prayer for healing the sick. And we can see in Psalms 30, verse 2, he said, O Lord, my God, I call to you for help, and you healed me. The ongoing principle seen here and elsewhere in the Bible is the power of a believer's prayer. God honors and answers prayers for healing, Abraham and Moses and David believed in God's healing power and his willingness to heal, and they prayed for it. Jesus taught on this same power of a believer's faith-filled prayer, and you can see this in Matthew chapter 21, verse 22. And all things whatsoever ye shall ask in prayer, believing, ye shall receive. And many times as we pray, we can become deeply emotional. And that's okay. Because sometimes things affect different people in different ways. And sometimes the things we go through do become very emotional. And so we see in 2 Kings chapter 20, verses 1 through 5, In those days Hezekiah was sick unto death, and the prophet Isaiah, the son of Amos, came to him and said unto him, Thus saith the Lord, Set thine house in order, for thou shalt die and not live. Next verse, please. Then he turned his face to the wall and prayed unto the Lord, saying, I beseech thee, O Lord, remember now how I have walked before thee in truth and with a perfect heart and have done that which is good in thy sight. And Hezekiah wept sore. And it came to pass, afore Isaiah was gone out into the middle court, that the word of the Lord came to him, saying, Turn again and tell Hezekiah, the captain of my people, thus saith the Lord, the God of David thy father, I have heard thy prayer, and I have seen thy tears. Behold, I will heal thee. On the third day thou shalt go up into the house of the Lord. He cried out unto the Lord. The Lord heard his prayer, and the Lord told him that he had seen his tears. So apparently it was a very emotional time for him. Serious illnesses can be emotionally devastating. King Hezekiah was sick unto death, and to make matters worse, the prophet Isaiah brought to him the Lord's message that his illness would be fatal. 
The Bible revealed to us that having learned that his illness was termina, uh, terminal, Hezekiah wept bitterly as he prayed unto the Lord. And we can note that in this verse that God regarded both Hezekiah's prayer and his emotions. He said, I have heard thy prayer and I have seen thy tears. Behold, I will heal thee. It's okay with God if we, were quite, if we are quite emotional in approaching him with our healing needs. Now we're going to take a look at some examples of Jesus healing the sick, the infirm, the disease, and also those in pain. You see, Jesus healed a broad range of illnesses. In fact, as he went through, and we'll see in the scriptures, some of these towns all throughout Galilee, it says that he healed every disease and every sickness. If we look in Matthew chapter 4, Verses 23 and 24. And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of diseases among the people. And his fame went throughout all Syria and they brought unto him all sick people that were taken with diverse diseases and torments and those which were possessed with devils and those which were lunatic and those that had the palsy and he healed them. If you notice in these verses that it says, and Jesus went about all of Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and preaching in the gospel. He didn't go out and do the healings first. He went and taught and preached in the synagogues and the healings became after. And it's the same way today. Uh, Signs and wonders often follow the preaching of the word. Every disease and sickness, Jesus' healing power is without limit. His healing touch is available to everyone. There is no illness beyond his ability to cure. He healed them all. He healed those with various diseases. He healed those who had severe pain. He healed those who were demon-possessed, those having seizures, and also those that were paralyzed. So what does this say to us? We should not hesitate to bring any of our healing needs to Jesus because in his ministry of healing, he has demonstrated his ability and willingness to heal every disease and every sickness among the people. And we can see that Jesus' healing power was prophesied in the Old Testament. And we can see this in Matthew chapter 8, verses 16 and 17. When the even was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils, and he cast out the spirits with his word and healed all that were sick. that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, himself took our infirmities and bare our sickness, sicknesses. The prophet Isaiah spoke of it seven centuries before the New Testament era. The prophet Isaiah said that Jesus would take up our infirmities, that he would bear our diseases, and that he would heal all that were sick, to fulfill the prophecy of Isaiah. Now in Matthew chapter 14, verses 35 and 36.
another example of Jesus' healing touch. And when, of, and when the men of that place had knowledge of him, they sent out into all that country round about and brought unto him all that were diseased and besought him that they might only touch the hem of his garment and as many as touched were made perfectly whole. So we see in this instance that Jesus didn't even go and touch them. They touched the hem of his garment and were healed. And if we look in the book of Mark, chapter 1, verses 40 and 41. And there came a leper to him, beseeching him, and kneeling down to him, and saying unto him, If thou wilt, thou can make me clean. Believe in the Lord for divine healing and have faith in his power and willingness to heal you. Sometimes healing comes from what would seem to us to be a rather unusual and even a remarkable method. There's, there is no, I, I think partly what he's trying to show us here is there's no one method that he, he's bound to to heal you. He will, there's many examples in the Bible how he can heal you. And so we're going to look in uh, the book of John, chapter 9, verses 6 and 7. I, I think, in other words, don't get a set in your mind that God can only heal you one way. There are some examples, and I, I believe I'll get into that a little bit later on, that, you know, if you're sitting there and you're hearing, we'll say, for example, uh, a message and God speaks to you through the message that he wants to heal you and that you should go to the altar or whatever he may say to you, and you say to yourself, well, you can heal me right where I am. Well, I would have to, and he could. He could if that's what he chooses to do. But if he asks you to go to the altar or whatever it is that he asks you to do, and because of your pride, you say, no, no, Lord, you can heal me right here. Well, guess what? Don't let your pride deprive you of your healing. So we can see in John chapter 9, verses 6 and 7, it says, And said unto him, Go wash in the pool of Siloam, which is by interpretation sent. He went his way therefore and washed and came seeing. Okay, well, that's not quite what I have here, but let me read what I have here. John chapter 9, verse 6. Okay, here we go. Then he had thus spoken. He spat on the ground and made a clay of spittle, and he anointed the eyes of the blind man with clay. Next verse. And said unto him, Go wash in the pool of Siloam, which by interpretation is sent. And he went his way, therefore, and washed and came seeing. So here we have Jesus spitting on the ground, made some mud, anointed the man's eyes, told him to go wash, and he was healed of his blindness. 
Now, I know that many of you that have heard some of Pastor Diamond's testimonies of how God has told him to do certain things to heal people. And if you haven't heard some of these testimonies, please come Wednesday and Thursday. There's a good chance you'll hear them again. And if not, we'll, we'll ask them to share. But uh, this doesn't sound so out of the ordinary when you hear some of the testimonies of how God has used him in healing. So we'll look in the book of Acts now, chapter 5, verses 15 and 16. insomuch as they brought forth the sick into the streets and laid them on beds and couches that at least the shadow of Peter passing by might overshadow some of them. There came also a multitude out of the cities round about unto Jerusalem, bringing sick folks and them which were vexed with unclean spirits, and they were healed every one. So we can see that Peter's shadow, just his shadow passing over them, uh, the people were healed. So we see that God can heal in a variety of ways. But the common denominator of all these things and all these examples is that God does heal. So you may ask, who can be used to bring divine healing to those in need? Ultimately, all spiritual healing in all instances does proceed from God. But the early apostles healed. And we can see that in Matthew chapter 10, verse 1, and then in verse 8. And when he had called unto him his twelve disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. Now the names of the twelve apostles are these. And they go on through the names. I don't have to name them all. But what I'm trying to show you is how he gave power to the apostles to heal. And then he gave power to a larger group of 72 disciples who were sent by Jesus to heal the sick. And you can see this in Luke chapter 10, verse 1, and then 8 and 9. After these things, the Lord appointed other 70 also and sent them two and two before his face unto every city and place whither he himself would come. Verses 8 and 9. And into whatsoever city ye enter, and they receive you, eat such things as are set before you, and heal the sick that are therein, and say unto them, The kingdom of God is come nigh unto you. So we see that... Uh, Jesus gave power to the 72 disciples to heal the sick. And in the Great Commission, Jesus encouraged all believers to heal the sick. And we can see this in Mark chapter 16, verses 15 and 18. And this applies to us today. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And they shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Go to the next verse, please. The Great Commission is for all believers to share the good news of Jesus in all the world. 
and God will confirm the gospel with supernatural signs, including healings. Now, there are some that, you know, we have the gifts of the Spirit, which one of the gifts is the gifts of healing. So that's another, not not all have the gifts of healing, but uh, there's nothing wrong. that The Bible says to seek, seek the gifts. Uh, and there's nothing wrong with seeking the gift of healing if that's if that's how God leads you. So we're going to look in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, and we're going to read from verses 7 through 11. And this will kind of this will show you some of the uh, manifestations of the, the gifts of the Spirit. Uh, verses 7 through 11. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another the gifts of healing by the same Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another diverse kinds of tongues, and to another interpretation of tongues. But all these worketh that one and the selfsame spirit, dividing to every man severally as he will. This list is commonly called the nine spiritual gifts or the gifts of the Holy Spirit. These are supernatural gifts with which the Holy Spirit endows individual Christians to minister to others. Jesus healed again and again while he walked on the earth, and he remains the same yesterday, today, and forever. And you can see that in Hebrews chapter 13, verses, verse 8. So we see that Jesus does heal today. Biblical healing methods may vary, and they include healing prayer, the laying on of hands, a spoken word, and anointing with oil by praying elders, among others. Jesus has entrusted the healing ministry to his church. The first apostles healed the sick, and so did a large group of the disciples. In the Great Commission, Jesus encouraged all believers to lay hands on the sick for healing. And there will be some in the churches whom the Holy Spirit, like I said, will endow with the specific gift of healing. So we're going to look once more into the Old Testament, uh, the book of Exodus, 1526. And I'm just going to go down to the very last part of that verse. I am the Lord who heals you. And we'll go over to Psalms. 103, verses 1 through 3. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases. Once again, I'm just trying to go over uh, some of these scriptures that will build up your faith that God can heal you. God is able to do immeasurably more than we can ask or even imagine. I'll say to you this morning, don't limit God. He, crew, he who created the heavens and the earth with a simple spoken word can speak into your life divine blessings beyond your imagination. Believe him for these things. The God we serve is the one who delights in the well-being of his servants. He delights in your well-being more than you can even ask or imagine. 
So that's all I have this morning, but we're not done yet. I hope that by hearing these healing scriptures, it has inspired you to seek the Lord for your healing, whether it be physical or, I mean, it could be, I mean, people struggle with life in general. I mean, it could be your marriage. God can heal marriages. He can heal relationships. He can heal your body. Whether it be uh, emotional or physical, there's nothing too hard for him. So I'd like to close up this service with uh, the song, Jesse, if you could. And if you feel led to come and pray, the also is open.